back to the trading post. It's here, it's Fred, and of course, you know the star of the show, good old Noodle. He's wide awake, ready to roll. He's wanting to have some fun, right? Look at that little fat belly. He's getting big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you going to bite me now. Okay. But uh, anyways, this here is part four, and we're going to do the Zodiac Killer part four. And I want you to know ahead of time, we got probably part five and six going to be coming because there was so much information on this episode. It's absolutely crazy. I mean to tell you, it is crazy. There's a lot. And I'm sorry there's so many parts, but I have to break it down. I try to make it in manageable chunks for all of us. So, I mean, I know we all work. We all work hard. You know, half the time we don't got time to watch something for an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever, however long, you know, give you about a half hour chunk, maybe you're good to go, you know, but we'll, we'll see, you know, this is the introduction to part four, all right, look at this old psycho, look what he's doing, he's trying to break out, he's trying to get the heck away from me, anyways, hang tight, we're going to go ahead and continue this, all right, all right, y'all, we're on part four of the Zodiac, killer again all right now we're going to go into further zodiac messages and this is april 1970 letter and card is what we're going to talk about <laughs> pardon me zodiac continued to communicate with authorities for the remainder of 1970 via letters and greeting cards to the press in a letter postmarked April 20th, 1970, he wrote, My name is blank, followed by a 13-character cipher that has not been solved to this day. <laughs> Excuse me. He also said he was not responsible for the recent bombing of SFPD's police station in Golden Gate Park, which killed Sergeant Brian McDonald but added, there is more glory to killing a cop than a Sid because I, a cop can shoot back. The letter included a diagram of a bomb the Zodiac claimed that he would use to blow up a school bus. At the bottom of the diagram, he wrote the Zodiac symbol, which is a circle and crosshairs, equals 10 and SFPD equals zero. On a greeting card to the Chronicle Post marked April 28, 1970, which is roughly over a week later, the Zodiac wrote, I hope you enjoy yourselves when I have my blast, followed by the killer's crosshair signature. On the back of the card, the Zodiac threatened to use the bus on the back of the card. Right. Hold on. Uh, the Zodiac threatened to use the buzz bomb soon unless the newspaper published the full details that he had written. He also wanted to start seeing people wearing some, some nice Zodiac buttons. So I'm assuming at that point in time they was making buttons of the Zodiac Killer for God knows what reasons. There's When there's money involved, people make shit, okay? It's that simple. So figure that one out you can research it looking into it. but I'm not, I'm not worried about damn buttons I'm worried about the, the guy the killer himself okay that's what we're focusing on anyways June 1970 there was a letter and a map okay in a letter postmarked June 26 1970 the zodiac stated that he was upset that he did not see people wearing zodiac buttons writing I shot a man sitting in a parked car with a 38, the Zodiac was possibly referring to the murder of San Francisco Police Department Sergeant Richard Raditich, who was killed one week earlier after being shot through the window of his squad car by an unidentified gunman during a routine traffic stop. The San Francisco Police Department denies that the Zodiac was involved in Raditich's death. The murder remains unsolved. Oh, man. There's a lot to unpack just on that alone. We're going we're gonna to move on, y'all. We're going to keep going, okay? If you got questions about anything, whatever, 
sent them to me. We're going to figure it out. But included with the letter was a Phillips 66 roadmap of the San Francisco Bay Area. I have a picture of it on here at the beginning of this one. So you can look at it. You'll see it. On the image of Mount Diablo, the Zodiac had drawn a crossed, hair, crossed circle similar to, the, to, the, to those from previous correspondence. At the top of the crossed circle, he placed a zero, a three, six, and a nine. The accompanying instructions stated that the zero was, the, was to be set to magnetic north. The letter also included a 32-letter cipher that the killer claimed would, in conjunction with the code, lead to the location of the bomb that he had buried and set to detonate in the fall. The cipher was never decoded. And the alleged bomb was never located. Obviously, it never blew up. Now... The fact that they never found it, that's a scary, that's a very scary thought, to be honest. You know, however the man has his head, however the dude has it set up for the damn thing to blow up, I, I don't know just yet. We're getting into the notes. We're going through this shit. But the point is, I mean, you got this crazy motherfucker. He's, he's, he's antagonizing the cops. You know, this dude feels like he ain't never going to get caught. And as far as he's concerned throughout this whole story, and we're going to jump a little forward, he never did. Okay? He never did. He never did get caught. This motherfucker. Who knows how many people, he, who, who knows how much, how high his body count is. You know what I mean? And we ain't talking about dating right now. You know what I mean? It's a different, that's a whole different story about the body count, right? So... We're going to jump into the next subject. It's July 1970 letters. All right. We're going to talk about these 1970 letters, which we've done with a couple of them already. In a letter postmarked July 24th, 1970, the Zodiac took credit for the Kathleen Johns abduction four months after the incident. In a July, 19, uh, July 26th, 1970 letter, the Zodiac pr paraphrased a song from the Mikado adding his own lyrics about making a little list of the ways in which he planned to torture his slaves in paradise. The letter, excuse me, the letter was signed with a large exaggerated cross circle symbol and a new score. Zodiac symbol equal 13, SFPD equals zero. A final note at the bottom of the letter said PS the, the Mount Diablo code concerns radians plus number plus the number of inches along the radians. In 1981, a close examination of the radian hint by the Zodiac research, researcher Gareth Penn led to the discovery that a radian angle when placed over the map per Zodiac's instructions pointed to the locations of two Zodiac attacks. What the hell? Man, this dude's a straight up nut. He's a, he's, he's a crazy motherfucker. This dude's a loon. Needs to be put up. It, 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 I ain't going on, dude. We got more shit to cover. Let's go to October 1970 cards we're going to talk about. On October 7th, 1970, the Chronicle received a 3 by 5 inch card. 7.6 centimeter by 12.7 centimeters. Okay, if you're into the centimeter measurements, okay? Nicknamed the 13 hole punch card, signed by the Zodiac with, with the Zodiac symbol, the circle with crosshairs uh, symbol, and a small cross reportedly drawn with blood. Oh, shit. The card's message was formed by pasting words and letters from an edition of the Chronicle, and 13 holes were punched across the card. Inspectors Armstrong and Toshi agreed that it was highly probable that the card had been sent by the Zodiac. On October 27, 1970, Avery received a Halloween card nicknamed as such, signed with a letter Z and the Zodiac's crossed circle symbol. Handwritten inside the card was the note, Peekaboo, you are doomed. 
The threat was taken seriously and was the subject of a front page story in the Chronicle. The phrase 14 in the letter was interpreted as a possible reference to a 14th victim. Avery started packing a pistol, while Chronicle reporters jokingly started wearing buttons saying, I am not Avery. Soon after receiving the letter, Avery received an anonymous letter alerting him to the similarities between the Zodiac's activities and the unsolved Bates murder in Riverside. Uh, that's a little fishy, isn't it? With all this shit going on, then all of a sudden you get a letter. Okay, well, it's putting shit together. It's putting it together. I, I think what it was, my opinion, this is just my opinion, stipulation, speculation, whatever, however you want to word it. Okay, that was the Zodiac Killer that sent that shit to him after the fact. He's trying to get, he's, he's, he's doing everything he can to try to put clues in their front of their face, but make them as hard as possible for them to fucking decipher, to, to be able to solve these problems so they can catch his ass. I think this dude is beyond egotistical. He's a megalomaniac. He's, he's a narcissistic asshole. This dude, all right. He gets a thrill. He gets a kick out of the excitement from the fact that he has no guarantee that he's not going to be caught. But in, in at this point in, in the state in the stage of the game right now, this dude feels like, yo, I ain't gonna get caught. What the hell? I done called the cops. I told them shit about some of the stuff I've done, and they still ain't caught me. They have no they have no clue. They're, it's like a dog chasing his tail. That's all they're doing. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep messing with these fools, and I'm gonna play the game with them. I'm gonna psychologically mess their minds up. And I guarantee you right now, from the stuff this dude's done, I guarantee you, there was a lot of cops that had sleepless nights, numerous nights. Who knows, for months long, a year, years long. I don't know. They'd have to tell you that themselves. But the point is, when you got something to this magnitude or this level of a psychotic killer, a serial killer, literally tempting the law enforcement agency and getting away with it, hasn't been caught. It's it's pretty uh, it's pretty bad to say the least. I I would say. I don't know how you feel about it, but I would imagine you probably feel the same way. Anyways. Enough of my ranting and raving. Let's go ahead and continue on to the next one. The next one is the March 1971 letter. In March, thir in March 13, 1971, the letter to the Los Angeles Times, the Zodiac criticized that the police were unable to catch him, saying he had killed 17 victims. The Zodiac expert Tom Voigt theorizes that the reason why the letter was postmarked from Pleasanton instead of San Francisco, was for the joke of having an unpleasant letter come from Pleasanton. Now, the final Zodiac letter. After the, after the Lake Tahoe card, the Zodiac remained silent for nearly three years. He stayed silent, never said a word. The Chronicle then re received a letter from the Zodiac postmarked January 29, 1974, which complained that columnist Count Marco needed to feel superior to everyone and praise the film The Exorcist of 1973. Now you're talking about you're talking about the original Exorcist as the best satiric satirical some bitch, excuse me the best satirical satirical comedy that I have ever seen. The letter included a snippet verse from the Mikado and an unusual symbol at the bottom that has remained unexplained by researchers. Zodiac concluded the letter with a new score. Me equals 37, San Francisco Police Department equals zero. David Van Nuys, who is also a psychiatrist, believes the reason the Zodiac stopped killing is because 
He had a case of multiple personality disorder, which lessened over time, as with many people who have, had, who have the disorder, noting that the subsequent Zodiac letters lessened in intensity. Give me one second, y'all. All right. Now we're going to go into letters of suspicious suspicious authorship. Sorry, I slobbered. Um, of further communications sent by the public to members of the news media, some contain similar characteristic of previous Zodiac writings. In 1973, the Albany Times Union in New York received a letter postmarked for August the 1st. The Zodiac symbol was placed in lieu of a return address. In it, the writer pro proclaimed they were not dead or in the hospital and that they were going to kill again on August 10th. They said that the name and location of their next victim was available in a three-line cryptic code in the letter. FBI crypt crypto analysts deciphered the code to mean Albany Medical Center. This is only the beginning. Investigators could not find the murder that supposedly took place on August 10th, and handwriting experts could not determine if the letter was sent by the Zodiac. Okay. The Chronicle received a letter postmarked February 14, 1974, informing the editor that the initials for the Symbionese Liber Liberation Army, a radical group which had recently kidnapped newspaper heiress Patricia Hurst, spelled, spelled out an Old Norse word, meaning kill. However, the handwritings was not author authenticated as the zodiacs, so this could have been a, separ a completely separate other thing entirely, or was it? Because he did say prior to all this, if I recollect correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, he did say he was gonna he wasn't gonna no he wasn't gonna announce his newer murders right. So he wasn't going to publicize it. He wasn't going to send them information and this and that. So in in a sense, it very well, it very well could have been him. But there's no solid evidence whether it was or wasn't. Therefore, it's questionable. So, okay. Now we're going to go to the next one. Or we're going to follow down through here. A letter to the Chronicle postmarked May 8, 1974, featured a complaint that the movie Bad Badlands of 1973 was murder glorification and asked the paper to cut its advertisements. Signed only, a citizen. The handwriting, tone, and surface irony were all similar to the earlier Zodiac communications. The Chronicle subsequently received an, an anonymous letter postmarked July 8, 1974, complaining of their publishing the writings of the anti-feminist columnist Marco Sp Spinelli. The letter was signed, The Red Phantom, read, read with rage. The Zodiac's authorship of this letter is debated. Give me one second. All right. In 1976, several letters were sent to a San Francisco news, newspaper praising David Toshi's investigative work. These letters were eventually discovered to be written by Toshi himself. He was removed from the Zodiac's case in 1978, and he later said he regretted writing the letters. Also, in 1978, a letter was sent to Chronicle columnist Armistead Maupin, that claimed to be from the Zodiac himself. It was alleged that Toshi wrote the letter, which he and the San Francisco Police Department denied. The San Francisco Police Department had compared the handwriting of the letter with Toshi's handwriting. In 2007, an American Greetings Christmas card sent to the Chronicle, postmarked 1990 in Eureka, was rediscovered. In the paper's photo files, by editorial assistant Daniel King. This letter 
was handed over to the Vallejo police. Inside the envelope with the card was a photocopy of two United States Post Office keys on a magnet keychain. The handwriting on the envelope resembled Zodiac's print, but was declared in, inauthentic by forensic document examiners. Or examiner Lloyd Cunningham, however, not all Zodiac experts agree with Cunningham's analysis. The discovery electrified Zodiac researchers. The letter, if it is real, disproves the theory that the Zodiac stopped killing due to his own death or imprisonment, and many theorized he could still have been alive. Okay, that's a big, uh, that's a big thing for the case, like, you know, all these little points and intricacies, like, because this dude is, honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, this is my opinion of, of what he was, okay? In my opinion, he was the real-life Riddler. If you ever watched Batman, the Riddler, this is who this is who this guy is. He, pers he personified the Riddler in real life. This is what this guy was, okay? Now... We're going to move on and go to the 21st century developments, all right? So, in April of 2004, the SFPD marked the case inactive, citing caseload pressure and resource demands effectively closing the case. Now, however, they reopened their case sometime before March 2007. The case is open in Napa County and in the city of Riverside. In May of 2018, the Vallejo Police Department announced their intention to attempt to collect the Zodiac's DNA from the back of stamps he used during his correspondence. The analysis by a private laboratory was expected to check the DNA against GED match. It was hoped the Zodiac would be caught in a similar fashion to serial killer Joseph James D'Angelo. I don't know about this guy. I haven't looked into him. If you want me to do a, uh, an episode on him, throw it down in the comments. Email me if you have to. In May of 2018, a Vallejo police detective said the result, that results were expected in several weeks. Correct? Okay. So, as of December 2019, no results have been reported. And they did this shit back in, in May of 2018. So, you're talking a year has went by, still no results. And this is the police department requesting, <laughs> requesting this shit. So, why, why, the, why the delay? I mean, I'm sure the lab has their own explanation of it. Perhaps it was a partial print. They couldn't get enough off of it. Perhaps it was partial, a partial DNA sample. They couldn't get it all. I don't know. That's something else we'd have to look into. But that's a whole other tangent. We can do that on another one. But I got six episodes of this stuff, and we're only on four, y'all. So let's let's get through it. The FBI's investigation was still continuing as of 2020. Okay. Wow. Wow. Let's just do a real quick review of this. All right. Let's just go ahead and go back. We're gonna we're gonna explain. The time frame of this, right? So, the beginning of this, this shit all started in, uh, let's see here. Hold on, give me one second, I'll tell you. I know I already did, but I can't remember the damn dates. There's so many dates and so many, so much shit going on. Okay. Um... Let's okay. It started in 1969. Let's just say 1969 throughout the year, and as of 2020, they're still continuing continuing an investigation. That should tell you the gravity of this whole ordeal, this whole string of murders, this whole nonsense. As far as I'm concerned, it's 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 nonsense. It doesn't make none of this makes sense. Okay, when you have somebody that's killing people saying, oh, I'm killing them for slaves for the afterlife. Yeah, obviously, somebody says that shit, you're going to think, 
this mo this motherfucker, he's straight up out his head. He don't even know which way is up or down. But no, in fact, this 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 motherfucker does. Why? Because this dude has a, a genius level IQ, extremely smart and deceiving, manipulating and camouflaging himself in plain sight. What does that what does that tell you? Think about that. Okay? Come to your conclusions right now. Let me know what you think. All right? This is just a quick summary. We're just trying to brush up on it and we're going to continue on. Right? Right? Right fucking now. Okay? Suspects. We're going to go on to the suspects list. Give me one second. We're going to go on to the suspects list. Okay. All right. In 2007, the Guardian the Guardian wrote that over 2,500 people have been brought in as a possible Zodiac suspect, and at least a, a half dozen names were credible. The San Francisco Police Department had investigated and an estimated 2,500 suspects by 2009. Richard Grinnell, who runs the website Zodiac Ciphers, said in 2022 that there are probably 50 or 100 suspects named every year. Good Lord. Wow. So, you know, it's like with time, this shit's getting even harder because the list is just, it's fucking growing. And I don't, I don't understand. I mean, it's not, I'm not, I don't have the stuff right in front of me as far as the logistics of it. You know what I mean? So I can't, I can't tell you like, Wow. I mean, yeah. Props to you, Richard Grinnell, man. Props to you, man. And I'm going to tell you right now, people, if you want to look at it, you go check out his website at Zodiac Ciphers. I don't know. You know, that's what it, that's all it says. Zodiac Ciphers. If you want to check it out, check it out. If you're intrigued, look into it. I mean, obviously, he might have, Homeboy probably got a bunch of shit on there. I don't know. I might look at it whenever I'm done with this whole episode at this point, but I just have so much research already done. I, I, I just don't want to make it, I don't want to prolong it anymore uh, than it already is. Uh, if we have to do another second episode and continue it or whatever, and you guys want that, then let me know in the comments, email me, whatever you got to do, do it. All right. Now we're going to go on to the, the suspects. The first one. His name's Arthur Lee Allen. Okay? Here's his background. The only man ever the only man ever named by the police as a Zodiac suspect is Arthur Lee Allen. Okay? He was the only official named suspect. A former elementary school teacher and convicted sex offender who died in 1992. Allen denied being the, the culprit. In, in Zodiac, Gray Smith advanced Allen as a, a potential suspect. Now, let me back up for a second. Gray Smith, he wrote a book, and, and, and uh, uh, that, that's who Gray Smith was, the author of the book, okay? Advanced Allen as a potential suspect based on circumstantial evidence. Allen had been interviewed by police from the early, early days of the Zodiac investigations, and was the subject of several search warrants over a 20-year period. Holy shit. Really? Wow. In 2007, Graysmith noted that several detectives described Allen as the most likely suspect. In 2010, Dave Toshi stated that all the evidence against Allen ultimately turned out to be negative. Allen entered the United States Navy in 1951 and served until his honorable discharge in 1959. During his time in the Navy, he served mostly in the reserves, but spent some time on active duty. He served on multiple submarines and earned the China Service Medal for his service in Southeast Asia. In 1958, Allen faced a special court-martial at, at Treasure Island for bringing a loaded 45 automatic pistol onto the naval base. 
He was found not guilty. Okay, let's clarify that. He was found not guilty. Now, Allen lived in Vallejo and worked minutes away from where Zodiac victim Darlene Farron lived and from where one of the killings took place. Now, Jack Mullinax of the, of the Vallejo Police Department wrote that Allen had been fired from his teaching job in March of 1968 after allegations of sexual misconduct with students. He was generally well regarded by those who knew him, but he was also described as fixated on young children and angry at women. Oh, man. Listen, man. Mr. Allen, you know, <laughs> you have a bad deal, bro. A bad, a bad rap out the gate. Out the gate. All right? <laughs> It's, it's no wonder they put you as number one. The only suspect right there that was publicly known. Um, now, we're going to go into the investigation. On October 6, 1969, Allen was interviewed by Detective John Lynch of the Vallejo Police Department. Allen had been reported in the vicinity of the Lake Berryessa attack on September 27, 1969. He said he was scuba diving at Salt Point that day. Allen again came, came, to the, came to police attention in 1971 when his friend Donald Cheney reported to police in Manhattan Beach that Allen had spoken of his desire to kill people, used the name Zodiac, and secured a, a flashlight to a firearm for visibility at night. According to Cheney, this conversation occurred no later than January the 1st, 1969. Allen was interviewed by the police again in 1971. In September of 79, now in September of 1972, the San Francisco Police Department obtained a search warrant for his residence. In 1974, he was arrested for lewdness with a nine-year-old boy. After pleading guilty, he was sent to Atascadero State Hospital for pre-sentence evaluation and treatment. On May 13, 1977, Allen was given a suspended prison sentence and five years of felony probation. He completed probation successfully in 1982. Vallejo police served another search warrant at Allen's residence in February of 1991. Holy shit. Now, two days after Allen's death in 1992, Vallejo police served another warrant and seized property from his residence. Oh, my God, dude. I'm, I'm actually... I'm actually speechless, you know, on, the, on this one. Like, goddamn. This is... This is insane. Let, we're going to go on to the next one, all right? Since I don't have nothing to say on that. The evidence... Dave Toshi's daughter said that her father had always thought Allen had been the killer, but they did not have the evidence to prove it. Mark Ruffalo, which we all know him in the MCA, if you watch the superhero comics, the Marvel movies and stuff, he played the Incredible Hulk in the Avengers. Okay, now, who, he, who portray, he portrayed Toshi in the 2007 film about the Zodiac. Okay, and he commented, if you get into who these cops were, you realize how they have to take their hunches, their personal beliefs, out of it. Dave Toshi said to me, as soon as that, that guy walked in the door, I knew it was him. He was, sh he was sure he had him, but he never had a solid piece of evidence. So he had to keep investigating every other lead. Retired police now now retired police uh, handwriting expert Lloyd Cunningham, who worked on the Zodiac case for de decades, start, stated, "They gave me banana boxes full of Allen's writings, and none of his writing even came close to the Zodiac. Nor did DNA, DNA extracted from the envelopes." 
come close to Arthur Lee Allen. In July 92, Michael McGill in, in identified Allen as the man who shot him in 1969 from a photo lineup, saying, that's him, it's the man who shot me. However, police officer Donald Folk, who is speculated to have seen the Zodiac fleeing from the Stein killing, said in a 2007 documentary, his name was Arthur Lee Allen, that Allen weighed about 100 pounds more than the man he saw, adding that his face was too round. Nancy Slover, who received the call from the Zodiac in the aftermath of the, the Magu Farron shooting, said that Allen did not sound like the man on the phone. So all this stuff is, is, is clarifying that he didn't do it, right? Now, a letter sent to the Riverside Police Department from Bates' killer, which was typed with the elite type on a royal typewriter, the same brand found during the 1991 search of Allen's residence. Allen owned and wore a Zodiac Seawolf wrist, wristwatch, which used the same logo as the Zodiac killer in his letters, which is a circle with a target, a crosshair target. They both wore shoes size 10 and a half. So, okay, those are the coinciding things, but there's a lot of people that wear 10 and a half shoes, and I'm sure there was a lot of people that watch, wore, wore the, um, that wore the, um, damn it, what is it called? Zodiac Seawolf wristwatch. So that, that, that's, it's all circumstantial evidence, obviously. Um, so in 2002, the San Francisco Police Department developed a partial DNA profile from the saliva on stamps and envelopes of Zodiac's letters. The San Francisco Police Department compared this partial DNA to that of Allen. A DNA comparison was also made with the DNA of Don Cheney, who was Adams, who was Allen's former close friend and the first person to suggest Allen may be the Zodiac. Since neither test result indicated a match, Allen and Cheney were excluded as the contributors of the DNA. His fingerprints also did not did not match those lifted from the Stein murder. Now, we're going to go on into the... I'm sorry, i got to dig my ear. My ear, ear's itching. Um, we're going to go on to the next suspect, Earl Van Best Jr. Now, in 2014, Gary Stewart and Susan Mustafa published a book, The Most Dangerous Animal of All, Searching for My Father and Finding the Zodiac Killer, in which Stewart claimed his search for his biological father, Earl Van Best Jr., led him to conclude Van Best was the Zodiac. Stewart based his theory on circumstantial evidence, including a police sketch resembling Van Best, partial fingerprint and handwriting matches, encrypted messages in Zodiac letters, and partial DNA connections. In 2020, the book was adapted for FX Network as a documentary series. To validate Stewart's claims, the the producers enlisted private investigator Zach Feckheimer, who uncovered that Stewart had manipulated a police report and traced Van Best Jr.'s presence in Europe during the Zodiac's activities. Additionally, experts discredited the DNA analysis and the handwriting and fingerprint matches. The producers chose to withhold their findings until near the end of the year long production to minimize their impact on both the series and Stewart. Six months after production, director Keith Davidson stated that he thought Stewart's father was not the Zodiac, while executive producer Ross Dinerstein remained uncertain about Van Best Jr.'s potential involvement. Hmm. So you got conflicting views right there. But everybody has their own opinion, right? We all have opinions. They're like assholes. They all stink. So whatever. But let's go ahead and move on to the next suspect. His name's Gary Francis Post. In 2021, the Case Breakers, an independent group made up of around 40 former law enforcement officials, 
academics, journalists, and former military intelligence workers said they had identified a man who died in 2018, Gary Francis Post, as the Zodiac Killer, also stating he murdered Sherry, Sherry Jo Bates. The FBI stated that the case remained open and that there was no new information to report. Local law enforcement expressed skepticism regarding the team's findings. Riverside Police Officer Ryan Railsback said the case breaker's claims largely relied on circumstantial evidence. Rumors about Post as a suspect had been investigated by the SFPD in 2017. They visited his jail, but declined to say if they interviewed him. Why in the hell would they do that? That's a little fishy. Okay, anyways, just, just a note a point note in case. In 2023, the case breakers claimed an FBI whistleblower told them the Bureau had considered Post a suspect since 2016. Now, Post was an Air Force veteran. He had a history of violence. He pushed his wife into a wall, breaking her pelvis, and his relative claimed Post tried to attack him with a hammer. Post allegedly had a group of young male followers who he trained to be killing machines and who often attacked animals. Oh, shit. Let me stop here, right here. All right. All this sounds good and sweet and kind and whatever. You know what I mean? As far as pinpointing it on him. Now, the point is, what the point I'm going to make is the Zodiac Killer. All right. His profile fits somebody that's calm, cool, and collective. That doesn't lose his head. That doesn't lose his bearings. He is very focused. Focused above most average citizens. Right? So why in the hell would you believe a man like Post, all right, that has been prone to attack a a motherfucker with a hammer, all right? And it showed that he has such rage issues. Um, attacked his wife, broke her pelvis. Come on, man. I don't, I personally, I don't, I don't know if I buy into this. Like, let's get through the rest of this and we'll find out if, if anything changes my mind. But at this point, I don't buy it. I'm not buying the bullshit they're slinging. You know what I mean? I ain't. I ain't picking up what they're putting down. You know what I mean? So let's continue on. Let's see if there's anything else because we're going to be stopping this here very shortly. So, and then we'll pick it back up on part five. Um, one piece of evidence used by the case breakers involved four head scars that were supposedly present on both Post and the Zodiac. Tom Voigt called the claims bullshit, noting that no witnesses in the case described the Zodiac as having forehead scars. Oh, God damn, it's getting deep. You know, we got to get our hip waders on this motherfucker. But I'm going to tell you right now, this here right here is going to be the end of part four. Now, if you want to hear more about this and you want to find out the end of this stuff, we got a little bit more going on. Hang in there with me. Bear with me, all right? I dug into this shit. I, I, I got in the trenches for you all. So... I, I, I hope y'all stay with me on this. All right? Let's follow this. Let's follow this out. Let's find out. Let's get to the end of this. Okay? Then you have all the information available that I have to me. Y'all is going to have it to you. And you can come to your own conclusion and, and, and try to brainstorm on this one. Because it's a confusing, it's a confusing motherfucker. Anyways, this is the end of part four. We're going to pick it up on part five. All right? And as I always say, y'all, thanks, my Train Post family. I love y'all. Thank you for your support, your love, and your kindness. And remember, live life in love, because tomorrow's not promised to any of us. You have a great one. Bye.